Welcome to Lotus on Track. Coming up, we've got some great coverage of the second round of the Lotus Cup UK here at Silverstone. We'll also head over to Nürburgring for the first round of the Lotus Cup Europe. So Adrian, you've just been out for qualifying. How did you find the track today? Uh, yeah, it's all right. Um, it was a little bit slippery in qualifying than it was this morning. But um, yeah, it was, it was good. Um, I mean, we've set the car up more for race than we have for qualifying, but putting it on pole today is, is you know, it's a bonus really. Silverstone's not our ideal circuit, but it was pretty solid out there. It was just picking your way through traffic, which was the problem. But it's, um, people have upped their game this year, so it's going to be really close. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We're here on the grid for the Lotus Cup UK race at Silverstone. It's a bit hit and miss with the weather, so let's hope the rain holds off. Well, fantastic field of cars for the second round of the 2013 Lotus Cup UK. We've got Super Sport class runners and, of course, a full field of the production class cars that we see from the Lotus on Track Elise Trophy. Lotus is, as far as the eye can see, on the magnificent Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. This is how they line up with Adrian Hall and Steve Guglielmi showing the front row from Marcus Jewell and Rob Fenn. Hetherington's have seen off their problems from Sneston. They are in 13, just clear of Matt Bartlett and James Knight. Dave Carr also doing well, stepping up to the Exige. Production class runners in the Elise gone forever, but Andy Napier delighted to be on the podium at Sneston. He lines up 27th today. Stuart Plotnick, uncharacteristically lonely, in the order in 30th position. Great see Donald Cannard back behind the wheel of the Lotus as he shares the rope with Paul Baker. Mike Vays also a long way down in 40th. Seth Walpole completes the 41 car field. It's a rolling start, of course, in the Lotus Cup UK as the pack pace themselves through Woodcock Corner. The lights about to flash to green, and then we'll go racing here at Silverstone as away we go now and who's got the jump for the line and it's the white exige of adrian hall number 73 who sprints clear of steve google we also well away is the bright orange 211 with marcus jewel as they pitch in Scott's corner for the first time the elise trophy cars cleanly through as well there's paul baker just picking his way around the outside of donald canard as they accelerate on towards maggots where it's adrian hall who has got the advantage over marcus jewel Jewel coming under a lot of pressure from Steve Guglielmi as the field snake their way through Beckett's good battle as well, shaping up in the production class. Andrew Wright and Adam Gould, there's David Harvey in his 340R. Mard in the midfield is accelerating down the hangar straight for the first time, consulting his mirrors, Adrian Hall, with good reason because Marcus Jewel is Bobby Weaver all over his cell, also moving up into third. Andrew Bentley in the Avora, so Bentley going well. Here's the battle for the lead to production class, it's the blue machine of Adam Gore, number nine, who dives to the inside of Andrew Wright. And will he snatch the advantage? Wright was on the podium at Snetterton where Gore was a retirement. It looks like Adam Gore's gone through there. Andrew Bentley also trying to make the move on Marcus Jewell into club as we look at Simon Deacon who's all over the tail of Steve Guglielmi. It's a little bit of a love tap with good reason because he's got Rob Fenn and Steve Train right on his tail as well. Accelerate out of club and on past the Silverstone Wing Complex onto the newer part of the Grand Prix circuit which was completed time for the 2010 British Grand Prix. Very, very quick corner now at Abbey. And Adrian Hall taking full advantage, trying to move clear then of Andrew Bentley, who did pass Marcus Jewell. This is the fight for fourth position. Simon Deacon, clear of Steve Guglielmi, who has got Rob Fenn, Steve Train right there. Steve Train going for the move on Rob Fenn into the loop. That's a lovely overtaking move. If he can make it stick from Steve Train, he squirts the car out of the hairpin. I think as they head through entry onto the Wellington Strait, just be Rob Fenn who's got a little bit more in terms of momentum because Steve Train was so anxious to accelerate out of the loop of the car just spinning up on the exit but no Train goes through in the 211 takes the place away from Rob Fenn and certainly many people feel that this year's Lotus Cup UK Championship could well be decided between the pair of them Steve Train the reigning champion Rob Fenn has got pace and abundance there is always the question of reliability with that Go Green Motorsport car there is Steve Guglielmi qualified on the front row, just beginning to slip down the order a little bit. The former TVR Tuckman champion, as we got a lovely three-way scrap for the lead. Adrian Hall, Andrew Bentley and Marcus Jewell still very, very tight through Cops Corner as the field all sprint along past the traditional pits here at Silverstone. And where is our production class battle for the lead? It's Andrew Wright, who's still just clear of Alan Corr, the pair of them having a lovely battle 
who have also got Doug Setters, who is coming through the field as well. He's on the tail of Ben Brooks. As the race leaders, we will accelerate through Chapel Curve. Adrian Hall still got that advantage over Andrew Bentley, but Bentley, former Cleo Cup racer, former BRDC single-seater racer, and also once upon a time the Silverstone Scholarship winner. So he knows this place very, very well. Still side by side between Rob Fenn and Steve Train. And it's Train who once more keeps his nose clear. So Rob Fenn sandwiched between the two 11s. Just behind him is Ken Savage in the Perry's back car. And the change for the of the race. Andrew Bentley's gone through past Adrian Hall. So it's Bentley who now leads the way. Muvora as Rob Fenn dives back to the inside of Steve Train into Vail. Gains the place and Rob looking to make amends. What in the end transpired to be a fairly disastrous start to the season. It's Nestor because was by far the fastest driver of the weekend, just the reliability of the race didn't fall quite in his favour. He's now got a fair amount of ground actually to make up to Andrew Bentley ahead of the field. Bentley though has got his mirrors full of Adrian Hall. Hall evidently wants to reclaim the lead that he lost a few moments ago. Bentley slides the rear of the Evora as he tiptoes his way into the loop. The exit here is going to be absolutely crucial and Andrew Bentley squares that off perfectly. Marcus Jewell showing strongly too. Then nice battle for fourth and fifth between Simon Deacon and Steve Goodwin. Then we we'll get back to Rob Fenn who now he's clear of Steve Train. In sixth position just beginning to move clear of Train. Turn Train takes a big bite out of the curbs trying to get himself back onto turf. Then we've got Tom Chatterway and Pete Storey next up in the queue arriving into Brooklyn's then Gregory Motorsport Car Boys immaculately prepared by John Danby Racy as further down the field a spin for Clive Willis. He rejoins Andrew Hall pushing very, very hard to get back onto terms with Andrew Bentley. Likewise, Steve Guglielmi and Simon Deacon almost knows to tell. About Marcus Jewell, he's looking to the inside of Adrian Hall here and he's going to go through and that's nicely opportunistic driving from Marcus Jewell. He's always gone well here on the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit, remember him? And... Uh, James Lyon with some good battles in the Lowson Tracker Lee's Trophy a couple of years ago. And talking of the Lowson Tracker Lee's Trophy, a change to the lead in the production class is Adam Gore, who's back through at the boundary right. Third in the class at the moment is Martin Wills, David Harvey in the 340R, who was so competitive that Snesson tried to elevate himself up through the field. Ben Brooks has very much become part of this battle for the lead of the production class. Brooks sporting the novice across the rear of the car, which would suggest that he has got very, very little racing experience under his belt, so doing well to be far up the order. Leading trio through, no change in the order. Still, Simon Deacon holds off Steve Cook, the Elmi, but the pair of them being caught by Rob Fenn. They've got the two 11s of Train and Savage in attendance. As we go a little bit lower down the field, Seth Walpole and Donald Cannard having Michael Cannard in the white machine. The blue and white car of Walpole just ahead of him. And Cannard looking to make the move in to... Maggots would like to be a goofy move for Donald Cannard. No, it's not. Nothing Mickey Mouse about that. Through he goes, swooping around the outside and then jinking through Beckett's also. They've got onto their tail as well. I should say the Ketvel in the number 27 car. As accelerating through Chapel Curve. Cannard's made the move. All told, they might take advantage of the slipstream along the hangar straight. Fight for fourth has come together very, very tight now. Still, the black 211 of Simon Deacon clear of Steve Guglielmi. Then on the tail of them, we have got Rob Fenn. Where is Fenn? There he is, entering to the right of the screen. He's got the potential to have a good run here on Guglielmi in the similar release as they accelerate along Wellington Strait. Rob Fenn tries to take advantage of the slip stream. He could maybe look to challenge to the inside into Brooklyn's, which is a really traditional Silverstone overtaking manoeuvre. Is he quite close enough? No, he's not. So he just eases off through Brooklyn's instead, sets about trying to pressurise the error from Guglielmi into Luffield. But Steve Guglielmi has got huge experience on the variety of machinery, so he is not going to bow to the pressure of Rob Fenn too quickly. Meanwhile, head of the field is still the Evora of Andrew Bentley. These is the bright orange 211 of Marcus Jewell. Adrian Hall very much part of that fight. Simon Deacon remains in fourth position in his 211, going very strongly. From Steve Guglielmi. Meanwhile, Adam Gore and Ben Brooks engaged in battle, but Gore, in the car that was so successful last year in the hands of Rob Boston, leading the production class, he seems to have shaken off the attentions of Andrew Wright. He's now suddenly about getting his head down and trying to pull clear. He heads around Luffield and sprints on towards Woodcup. There's Andrew Wright a couple of places back behind Doug Setters. 
It's just as though effervescent competitors within the Lotus Cup UK, generally Doug's son Chris, could be relied upon to drive that car well up into the top 10 in the second half of the race. Brooks still standing out of gore, and this is the beauty of the Lotus Cup UK. You've got all sizes and shapes of Lotus, as demonstrated by the fact you've got the Evora from the 211 from the Exige in the top three positions in the race. And Andrew Bentley just beginning to move clear of Marcus Jewell here. Jewell has got Adrian Hall in his tail, having to contend with him. So the back, fantastic scrap going on within the Dutch class. It's Phil Stratton Lake in the British Racing Green Car, who's looking to try and make a little bit of ground, accelerating on towards Maggots. This is the man they're trying to chase down because to explain there are, there are two separate championships within the Lotus Cup UK there's the Super Sport Championship which is for the 211s the Avoras the Exige and the Lotus of the class then the production championship as well the points we'll find out how they'll be decided shortly because now we're going for a break join us in a couple of minutes